Hello, everyone. My name is Jianan Wang. Today, I will present our work, Ego, Creating Equivalent Graphs to Test Deep Learning Libraries. Deep learning systems have been widely deployed in many applications, such as self-driving cars, machine translation, and cancer detection. As a result, the reliability and security of deep learning systems are of vital importance. However, it remains a challenge to test deep learning systems, as deep learning systems are often complex, and it's hard to know the expected results. Recent researchers focusing on using differential testing to solve this challenge. The idea is to provide the same input to different implementations of the same functionality. More specifically, given a bunch of inputs, we feed them to two different implementations of the same functionality. And eventually, we compare the outputs of the two implementations to check whether there are inconsistencies. Here, Inconsistencies represent potential bugs in the implementations. To utilize the differential testing method to test deep learning libraries, existing techniques test a pair of deep learning libraries to cross-check two implementations of the same functionality. However, there are two limitations. First, those techniques require at least two implementations in different deep learning libraries, which is often unavailable for many deep learning software functionalities. For many functionalities that only exist in one library, existing techniques cannot test them. Also, they require a high-level library such as Keras to switch across deep learning library backends. Such a high-level library is hard to develop and maintain, and Keras has stopped supporting different deep learning libraries. To address these challenges, we propose Eagle, which uses equivalent graphs to test a single deep learning implementation. Now, let me introduce a motivating example of using Eagle to detect a real bug in TensorFlow. In deep learning libraries, recurrent neural network functions, or RNN functions, can often accept two input formats. A common format is the first dimension representing batch size and the second dimension representing time steps. This format is called batch major, and it is the usual input format developers use. The other format, time major, is time steps in the first dimension and batch size in the second dimension. The time major format better fits RNN computations because RNNs compute batches step by step. For example, given two instances of three word input, I like dogs and I eat apples, the input can be fed to RNN in batch major format. I like dogs, I eat apples, or time major format, I, I like it, dogs apples. Inspired by these two input formats, we can build a pair of equivalent graphs. Suppose initially we have the same time major input. We can directly feed the input to the bidirectional RNN function with time major parameter set to true. Or we can first transpose it to a batch major format, then feed it to the bidirectional RNN function with time major parameter set to false, and at the last, transpose its output back to time major format. These two outputs should be equivalent. However, if there's a bug in one of the graphs, we may detect inconsistencies. In our experiment, we apply Ego to test 13 RNN functions in TensorFlow and PyTorch. Ego detects that all bidirectional RNNs in TensorFlow 
incorrectly implement the time major functionality. This bug is confirmed and fixed by TensorFlow developers. Here are our contributions. We design 16 new equivalence rules, which cover six categories of deep learning graph equivalence to test deep learning libraries. We propose a novel idea of using equivalent graphs to detect bugs in deep learning libraries and implement the idea as Eagle. We evaluate Eagle on five of the latest versions of the most popular deep learning libraries, TensorFlow and PyTorch. Eagle detects 25 bugs, including 13 previously unknown bugs. Now, let's take a look at the overview of Eagle. Eagle consists of three main steps. First, we define generalizable rules for creating equivalent graphs. Second, for each rule, we obtain applicable APIs by checking deep learning APIs documentation and build pairs of concrete equivalent graphs. Finally, we execute the two equivalent graphs by feeding them fuzzed input, and we compare their output to detect inconsistency bugs. I will introduce each step in detail. In the first step, we define a list of equivalence rules. There are two resources we use. We examine deep learning libraries API documentation, and we also studied non-crash bugs reported in GitHub issues. Now, let's revisit the motivation example of bidirectional RNN equivalent graphs. We've introduced that for a time major input, we can directly feed it to bidirectional function with time major parameter set to true, or we can first transpose it to batch major format, then feed it to bidirectional function with time major parameter set to false, and at last, transpose its output back to time major format. These two graphs are called equivalent graphs because when we feed them with the same inputs, we expect them to have equivalent outputs. However, we detect inconsistencies in their outputs, which is due to a bug in the bidirectional API's implementation. These equivalent graphs are simplified for illustration. I now show more details to explain the bug. The bidirectional RNN consists of two independent RNNs, a forward RNN and a reverse RNN. The forward RNN processes the input in the normal order, and the reverse RNN in the reverse order. Since the output of the reverse RNN is not in the correct order, it needs to be reversed. The bug is in red in the right graph, graph 2, since the function reverse should be performed on the time dimension instead of the batch dimension. The API's batch major mod correctly uses the reverse function on the time dimension. But its time major mod incorrectly reverses the batch dimension instead of the time dimension, resulting in incorrect output. Now, let's go back to the equivalent graphs. These graphs are concrete. We want to define a generalizable rule based on them so that we can apply the rule to other APIs to generate more equivalent graphs. We notice that any RNN functions, such as LSTM, GRU, can replace the bidirectional API in the graphs. Thus, we can generalize the bidirectional function to any RNN function that takes time major as a parameter. Now, we obtain an equivalence rule which states that the RNNs taking time major tensors should produce identical results to those taking batch major tensors and adding transpose to their inputs and outputs. Designing equivalence rules is one of our key contributions, and this is another detailed example that illustrates the process of how we create an equivalence rule.
In this example, we found a GitHub issue that states TensorFlow's FloorDiv API has different results with or without TF function declaration. Here, TF function makes graphs out of TensorFlow's programs to provide optimization. Therefore, we define the following equivalence rule. On the left, the graph called FloorDiv API directly, while on the right, the graph called FloorDiv API decorated with TF function. They are equivalent because TF function is a transformation tool that creates Python independent data flow graphs out of Python code. It is supposed to enhance performance in terms of computation time, but it shouldn't affect the results. Then we generalize the concrete rule by abstracting the inputs, API functions, and configurations. We generalize FloorDiv to any API function and generalize TF function to any optimization options provided by deep learning libraries. Now, we define an equivalence rule that states the computation of an arbitrary function on some input is equivalent to the optimized version of this computation on the same input. After we define these equivalence rules, in step two, we use the equivalence rules to construct concrete equivalent graphs. We first identify a list of relevant APIs for each rule by searching deep learning libraries documentation. Then we concretize the rules by replacing the abstract functions in rules with each applicable API. For example, given the optimization equivalence rule we just defined, to make concrete equivalent graphs out of equivalence rules. We need to identify lists of relevant APIs. We first extract a list of relevant APIs. Then we extract a list of possible optimization options provided by the deep learning library. At last, we select one option from each list. Then, we use the options we selected from lists to build equivalent graphs. We first replace the abstract function with TensorFlow's API xdivy. Then, we replace optimization with tf function. By doing so, we obtain a new pair of equivalent graphs. In the third and the last step, we generate fast input using constraints extracted from documentation and feed the inputs to equivalent graphs. At last, we compare the outputs of equivalent graphs and check if there are inconsistencies. This is an overview of all the 16 equivalence rules we defined. We categorize them into six categories, optimization, API redundancy, data structure equivalence, data format equivalence, inverse equivalence, and model evaluation equivalence. Due to the time limit, I will introduce two equivalence rules with examples in these two categories, optimization and data structure equivalence. For the details of all our 16 equivalence rules, please read our paper. The first category is called optimization. It contains one rule, which is the rule we explained as an example of designing equivalence rules. It states that the computation of any API function should be equivalent with or without optimization given the same input. This is a pair of concrete equivalent graphs. The API is concretized to TensorFlow's xdivy, and the optimization method is tf function. We detect a new bug by using this pair of equivalent graphs. When feeding an input we generate, we detect inconsistencies. This is confirmed as a bug by TensorFlow developers after we reported it. This bug happens 
in the TF function mode when the inputs are large and the computation overflows, while it doesn't overflow in normal mode. Another category is called data structure equivalence. The rule in this category is related to sparse and dense tensors in deep learning libraries. Deep learning libraries often use tensors, which are multidimensional data structures as input. These tensors can be represented as dense or sparse tensors. Sparse tensors are a tensor representation that is more efficient with mostly empty tensors. The rule in this category states that given the same input, any function taking dense tensors should produce identical results to the same function or its sparse version taking a sparse tensor as input. This is a pair of equivalent graphs concretized from the rule we just introduced. On the left, the dense input is directly fed to the API at MM, which performs addition with matrix multiplication. On the right, the dense variables T1, T2, and T3 are first converted to sparse tensors, then fed to the API, which is the sparse version of addMM. The result is then converted to dense tensors again. With this input, we detect inconsistencies in the outputs, which indicates a bug in PyTorch's library. This bug has already been fixed by PyTorch developers. There are four other categories. The API redundancy category contains rules that generate equivalent graphs using a different API. For example, many 2D functions can be implemented using their 3D versions. Data format equivalence explores the different data formats that can become equivalent with a few transformations. For example, the batch major and time major rules we explained is a motivating example. Inverse equivalence explores the inverse functions in deep learning libraries. For example, lossless image encoding and decoding. Model evaluation equivalence checks the model's status in evaluation. For example, the model should behave equivalently before and after being saved and loaded. Here are our experiment settings. We evaluate Eagle on five versions of two of the most popular deep learning libraries, TensorFlow and PyTorch. We test our 16 equivalence rules on 1,427 deep learning library APIs in total. We generate 6,861 pairs of concrete equivalent graphs in total. And we generate 400 inputs per pair of equivalent graphs. On average, it takes 32 minutes to execute one pair of equivalent graphs. For the number of bugs Ego detected, Ego detects 25 bugs in total. Among those 25 bugs, 13 bugs are new. Nine of the 13 new bugs have been confirmed or fixed by the developers. This table shows the number of bugs detected by Ego for each category. Optimization is the category for which Eagle finds the most bugs, with a total of 10 bugs found. All of them are previously unknown bugs, and seven of those bugs have been confirmed or fixed by the developers. In conclusion, we propose and evaluate Eagle to test a single deep learning library. We design 16 new equivalence rules in six categories. We evaluate Eagle on five versions of the two most popular deep learning libraries, TensorFlow and PyTorch. Eagle finds 25 bugs, 13 of which are previously unknown bugs. You can find more details in our paper. Thank you.